Ever dreamed of having your own Jarvis just like Iron Man? The future is now. Today we embark on an electrifying journey to build a futuristic AI assistant. Smart, responsive and at your command. Let's bring science fiction to life. It's all about AI. Hey Jarvis. Hello. How can I assist you today? In two sentences, tell me when will AI overtake human intelligence? There is no current consensus among experts on when AI will overtake human intelligence. Some predict it could happen within the next few decades, while others believe it may never happen. Hey there, welcome back to another exciting video. Today, we are building a personal assistant like Jarvis, just like the one you saw earlier. While this version will be quite basic, if you enjoy it, I can expand its capabilities in future videos. I'll walk you through the entire process step by step, so just follow along. And if you'd love to see a more advanced version, let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to enhance it and bring you more awesome videos of Jarvis. All right, let's start with the basics then. For this version of Jarvis, we'll be using Python, HTML, a GIF file, and an icon file. First, open your IDE where you will be writing the Python code. Then set up your folder structure as exactly shown here. I'll explain the purpose of each folder and file in a bit. But make sure you create these folders and files as they are shown here. Some of these folders will automatically be created by your IDE, so you need not create them. For the rest, you will have to create them manually. Again, as I said, I'll explain in a bit. Okay, so let's jump into the folder structures and see what each of the folders are doing there and what are the files in each of the folders and so on and so forth. So let's start with the folder name .idea, which is an IDE specific folder and it can be ignored because it will be created automatically by the IDE. Then comes the PyCache folder. Again, it will be created automatically. It stores the Python bytecode files. Your IDE should automatically create it. Then comes your static folder, which you need to create manually and it should contain your CSS, JavaScripts and images that is needed for this Jarvis uh, personal assistant to run. Then comes your template folder, uh, which again you need to create manually and it will contain your HTML files, which will be used to render the web pages on which Jarvis will be running. Then there is a folder called virtual environment folder, VenV. Uh, again, it will be created automatically by your IDE. Uh, it contains Python dependencies, so you can ignore this and it will be automatically created once you get into that virtual environment. Then comes three other files, which is .env, which is the environmental variables file, and then the jarvis.py Python file, which is the main Python script uh, for running this Jarvis agent, and then the utils.py, which is an helper functions for getting environment-related details into the Jarvis main file. So these are some of the files and folders you need to create. I will show you now uh, what to put in each of the files that you need to put into each of these folders. So we'll go step by step from here on. Okay, so let's start by putting in the contents for the static folder, which you created manually earlier. Now, these folder will contain two files. One is a jarvis.gif and an icon file. Let's start by downloading a jarvis.gif file by searching in Google. Once you search in Google, download free Jarvis GIF, you will get a lot of websites which will give you GIF files, which will look like a Jarvis agent. Uh, just download it as a GIF and place it into the static folder. Next, uh, you go onto the website favicon.io and there you will find a link uh, called PNG to ICO image generator. Upload your Jarvis.gif that you downloaded previously into that and you will get a download uh, option to download an icon file, download that and put both the jarvis.gif and this icon file, which will be having an extension of ICO uh, into the static folder. So those are the only two files you need to put into the static folder. Well done, your first step is complete. Let's move on to the next folder, which is the templates folder. In this folder, we will have only one file, which is the index.html file. You can write this index.html file on your own or download it from the link I have provided in the description below. Put this index.html file in this templates folder. Uh, what this index.html file will do is that it will render the web page on which uh, the Jarvis assistant will run. So that is the only file you need to place in this templates folder and you are done. 
Next, you need to create this .env file. In order to do that, just open a notepad or a textpad file and write only one line, which is shown here, and then save it as a .env file. But before you save it, you replace your OpenAI key here with your own OpenAI key, which you can get by visiting the link that I'm showing you here. And I'll also give a reference to this link in the description below. Alternatively, you can also download the same file from the link that I'm going to give you in the description below. Just download that file. But again, you will have to open this .env file from that and then replace your OpenAI key here with your own OpenAI key from OpenAI website link that I'm going to give you in the description below or as shown here on the screen. Next, we write the utils.py file, which is a proper Python script file, which is designed to securely load and retrieve the OpenAI key from the .env file that we created earlier into the main Python script file, which we'll write in a bit. This is done in this way to ensure that the sensitive credentials are not hard-coded and remain dynamic for future use. We start writing this file by importing a few packages. First, we import the OS package, and then from the .env package, we load a couple of functions, which is the load.env and then find.env. The utilities of these two functions we'll see in a bit. In the same utils.py file, we then define a load env function. What this load env function does is that it loads environment variables from the .env file that we had written earlier. So how this function works is that it first calls find underscore dot env function from the packages that we had loaded earlier, which searches for this dot env file in all the project directory. Once it finds that dot env file, it reads that file and loads the environment variable from that dot env file into the system. If it does not find any dot env file, then it prints an error message. Next, in the same utils.py file, we define another Python function by the name of get OpenAI API key. What this function does is that it fetches the OpenAI API key. How it does that is that it calls the load env function that we had written previously to ensure the environment variables are loaded. Then it retrieves the OpenAI API key value from the environment using the os.getenv function. And finally, it returns that OpenAI API key to the caller. Lastly, you can test the function by calling it here. Lastly, we write the jarvis.py file, which is going to be your main code file, which you will need to execute when you want to run the Jarvis agent. How this code works is that it sets up a Flask web application that integrates with OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo model, but feel free to use your own model if you want to with a text-to-speech engine integration to create a Jarvis-like agent. We start writing this file again by importing a few packages, which is shown here. Next, in the same jarvis.py file, we set up the OpenAI API key and then we create a Flask application instance and initialize the text-to-speech engine. Next, in the same jarvis.py file, we define function chat with Jarvis and also define a function called speak, which will convert text to speech. In the same jarvis.py file, we then set up the Flask routes, which will basically render the index.html file that we created earlier on which the Jarvis assistant will run. This is the last line of the code in the jarvis.py file, which basically starts the web server in a non-debug mode. Okay, all right. Now we are done with all the project setup and the coding. Now it's time to run the application. Once you run the application, you open your web browser and go to the link as shown here, 127.0.0.1 colon 5000, where you should be seeing your web browser running your Jarvis Assistant all ready to take your first command. Congratulations, then you have created your own version of Jarvis, which is your first step to becoming the next Iron Man. Okay, Iron Man, now it's time I show you a small demo as to how to run the code and what should we expect in terms of output. So let's get started with the demo. So this is my project settings and this is my IDE. So you can see this, this is the main project folder, which is the Jarvis Assistant. So if I collapse it, uh, you see all the folders, the static folder, which will contain two files, as I already told you. One is the icon file, another is the jarvis.gif. And then comes the template folder, which has this index.html, and then the other winv and other files. The important files to note here again are the .env file, which has the OpenAI key, and then the jarvis.py and the utils.py, which are the two Python script files. So if I can take you back to the folder structure, 
here. So you will see that this is the folder structure, uh, which is pretty much similar to what you see here, right? Now, if I show you the .env file, it should contain whatever I told you. And then the jarvis.py file, it contains the main source code file written in Python. And then the utils.py file, okay? So all this is now set. Let me go ahead and try to run this. Uh, I'll right click on it and then I will say run Jarvis. So it should start running here. So it'll take a little bit of time to initialize and run. So I'll pause the video here and come back once it starts running. So you can see now uh, that this has started running. So once I have run the main Python file, I come to this browser and type out this address and then press enter. So you can see now Jarvis is activated. So in order to speak to Jarvis, I need to just press on the speak button and then speak. So I'll show you one example. I press the speak button. Hey Jarvis. Hello. How can I help you today? So Jarvis responded. Let me ask it a question. I have to press the speak button once again. Jarvis, tell me one functionality that I can build within you which can make you act as Jarvis from Iron Man. Give me only one functionality. One functionality that you can build within me to make me act as Jarvis from Iron Man is a virtual assistant feature with advanced natural language processing capabilities, allowing for seamless communication and assistance with various tasks and queries in real time, similar to how Jarvis assists Tony Stark in the movies. Okay, so there you see. So Jarvis is responding to my questions. So this is how you build a Jarvis personal assistant and you can use it for your own day-to-day uh, -day use or you can build in more functionalities or integrate with different tools to use it more effectively. So that's all for today's video. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please do share, subscribe and like, and also do put in a comment as to how you like this video and what else do you want me to cover in terms of functionality for Jarvis so that I can take it up in my next video or maybe in sometime in future. So until next time, thank you and have a great day ahead.